Discrete time convolution has several properties we want to look at. Right now we're going to look at the commutative and distributive properties of discrete time convolution. Let's look at the commutative property first. What we would like to compute is y of k is equal to h1 of k convolved with h2 of k. And we would like to show that you can commute these two, basically change the order. So let's just start with the definition. Let's just write down the definition of discrete time convolution of h1 with h2. That's the summation right here. And then let's do a change of variable. Let's let this new variable n equal k minus m. So when n is equal to k minus m, if you rearrange this equation, you have that m is equal to k minus n. When m is equal to minus infinity, then n from this equation, n is equal to k minus a negative infinity, or it's equal to positive infinity. And when m is equal to positive infinity, then n is equal to k minus infinity or minus infinity. So we've successfully computed two of the things that we need to change in this summation if we're doing a change of variable, the bottom limit for m and the top limit for m. We now know the corresponding values for n. So we can go ahead and rewrite this summation as the sum from n equals infinity, because that's what n is equal to when m is minus infinity, up to negative infinity, because that's what n is equal to when m is equal to positive infinity. And then we have h1 of k minus n. Remember the change of variable we did, if you rearranged it for m, you got m was equal to k minus n. So we've just substituted in the value for m there and then h2 of n, because we actually let n equal k minus m. So we've substituted in this change of variables. We can change the order of the summation. Summing from minus infinity to infinity is the same as summing from infinity to minus infinity, so we can change the order to have it in our conventional way we usually write summations, and then the argument does not change. Well, this, I can flip the order of the product, right? I can take h1 times h2 or h2 times h1. I haven't changed anything about the actual values there. I've just changed the order of the product because multiplication, I can change the order. Well, look at this. What I have right now is actually the quantity h2 convolved with h1. So if we actually write down the definition of h2 convolved with h1, I have this summation. So we've done, gone through a sequence of steps where we've shown that y of k, which is equal to our original starting point of h1 convolved with h2, by doing this change of variable, I've shown that it's actually also equal to h2 convolved with h1. So we've shown this property, the commutative property of discrete time convolution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the distributive property now. The distributive property says I can basically treat discrete time convolution like multiplication and that I can distribute a convolution between these parts. So instead of 8x of k convolved with a sum, I can write it as a sum of two different discrete time convolutions, x convolved with h1 plus x convolved with h2. So let's go ahead and show that this is true. So the distributive property of discrete time convolution. So let's start with the quantity we had on this previous slide x convolved with the sum h1 plus h2. Well, I can write down the definition of this. The definition of convolution is you take your first component and you replace the time variable with m, and then you take the second component and you replace the time variable with k minus m. So that's what I've done. I've just written down by definition what it means to convolve these two quantities. I can go ahead and distribute multiplication across these two pieces. So Instead of writing it as x times the quantity, h plus 1 plus h2, I can actually distribute the x across to write it as x times h1 plus x times h2, because multiplication is distributive. So now I have this sum. And instead of writing as a summation of two things, I can actually write it as two different summations. I can distribute the sum across those two parts. So now what I have is two summations. But if I look at this, what do I see? I see that this is actually equal to x of k convolved with h1. That, by definition, is x convolved with h1. Similarly, this term right here is x convolved with h2. So what I've done is I've actually written this as x convolved with h1 plus x convolved with h2. So we've shown that x convolved with the sum h1 plus h2 
is the same as x convolved with h1 plus x convolved with h2. We have shown the distributive property of discrete time convolution.